What's up, Wildlings? Colin, Wild Foods founder and CEO. Today, we're going to talk about adaptogenic mushrooms. So these have been growing in popularity in recent years, and for good reason, because the research around them is pretty much universal in that they're good for you. I'm going to list off some of the benefits, but more importantly, I'm going to just give to you a brief understanding of what they are, why you might want to use them, and then how to use them so that you can add them to your health routine. So medicinal mushrooms have been used by the Chinese in traditional Chinese medicine for over 2,000 plus years. For those of us in the West, when we think of mushrooms, we think of the kind that maybe you saute in a pan, maybe white button mushrooms or things like that. But that's not the case for most medicinal mushrooms. Now, something like lion's mane, which you can actually cook and eat, is a medicinal mushroom. But something like reishi is woody and not actually edible. So to prepare these medicinal mushrooms so that you can actually consume them, you make what's basically a mushroom broth. It's known as a mushroom extract. And this is taking a large amount of mushrooms, let's say 10 pounds, and then we're going to cook that down with hot water and or alcohol, which then extracts the nutrients and the beneficial properties that mushrooms are becoming known for. These mushroom extracts, as they're called, are now being used as supplements. And for good reason. They are potent. In fact, most people don't know, but 70% of pharmaceuticals are derived in some form from the fungi kingdom. We're just starting to unlock the benefits of these mushrooms, just starting to understand how they can be used in treatment of even modern chronic disease. Of course, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about medicinal functional mushrooms that you can take at home. That said, more and more research is coming out in which actual trials are utilizing these mushrooms to help individuals ward off modern disease. But today, we're talking about adaptogenic mushrooms. So we're not talking about pharmaceuticals. And let's start by defining what an adaptogen is. So an adaptogen is something that aids your body in adapting to stress. So think of it as something that helps your body run better. When your body runs better and it's managing stress better and it's managing inflammation better, everything is better. And that's why we have this long list here of potential benefits of mushrooms, which include, and I'll just list off a few, immune boosting, may help reduce inflammation, oxidative stress, may speed up recovery of the nervous system, may help with brain fog, may be neuroprotective, may be anti-anxiety, may be anti-tumor, may be anti-inflammatory, may reduce memory impairment, may increase motivation and energy, may increase memory, may potentially help lower blood glucose, et cetera. On and on and on it goes because basically adaptogens help your body get better. If we were to summarize what adaptogenic mushrooms do, they help with immune function as well as help you manage stress. The most common forms that these come in are a capsule, which the powder is inside, or you have the bulk powder, which you can add then to smoothies, shakes, coffee, even soups and stews. Some people even like to take a bunch of different mushrooms together and then combine it to their own capsules and do it that way. That's actually why we have the wild shroom blend because we have five of our best selling mushrooms in there. And so that you just do one scoop and you get all of it. Let's now list off real quick five of the most popular medicinal mushrooms and then some research connected to them. There'll be links to the research below. And keep in mind, this is not medical advice. This is not intended to prevent, treat, diagnose any disease. These are just research studies that have been done that we're citing that you can then go read on your own. This is just something that might want to get you interested in diving a bit deeper into mushrooms. So the first one we got is chaga. So chaga has been shown to fight off viruses. In one study, a water-based extract of chaga exhibited antiviral activity against common viral infections. And there'll be a link below for that. Lion's mane. One small-scale study gave patients four 250-milligram tablets containing 96% mushroom powder three times a day for 16 weeks. Those who took the lion's mane powder showed significant increased scores of the cognitive function scale compared with the placebo group. So they must have tested people from a cognitive perspective and then compared those to the placebo group that didn't have any of the lion's mane. Lion's mane is thought to be good for the brain because it can help stimulate nerve growth. And so there's multiple studies that are looking into this. Turkey tail. Turkey tail contains two powerful polysaccharides called PSP and PSK, which is at the center of a $5.4 million collaboration between Baster University and the University of Washington and funded by the National Institutes of Health. Researchers found that a daily dose of turkey tail helped improve immune function. PSP has also been shown to significantly enhance immune status in up to 97% of cancer patients studied. And there'll be a link to that below. Cordyceps. A double-blind placebo-controlled trial found that cordyceps acted like an adaptogen, hormone balancer, helping people struggling with fatigue increase their levels of energy and endurance. There's also a famous Olympic team, I believe it was the Chinese running team, that were supplementing with cordyceps tonic and taking high doses of it. And they, they might have won the gold that year or something. So that kind of helped with the popularity of cordyceps. Reishi. Studies have shown that polysaccharides and triterpenes in reishi 
decreased excessive fat storage seen in people struggling with weight gain and also potentially lowered blood sugar in diabetics. And there'll be a link below to that study as well. Now, a couple things about mushrooms and to keep this video short, because I could go on and on about this. There's a lot to unpack here. One of the most common questions we get are your mushrooms grown in China. And we emphatically answer they are because that's where the best mushrooms in the world are grown. The Chinese have been growing mushrooms, cultivating them, extracting them for years. I mean, we're talking hundreds of years for some multi-generational farms that we work with, as well as thousands of years in China in general. And so this idea that everything that comes out of China is bad is kind of a misnomer. It doesn't really add up. In fact, most of the products that we have around us in our everyday lives uh, come from China, right? And a lot of food is imported from China, surprisingly. Most people don't realize that. There's quality to everything. So when you work with a small supplier that does things in a certain way and you have certain COA inspections and things like that, you're going to be able to maintain a standard of quality. We've also been sourcing from the same Chinese manufacturer for over about four years now, and we've never had an issue with quality. And I use these products on a daily basis myself. That's what we do at Wild Foods. We like to work directly with manufacturers and farmers that really know what's going on in the supply chain and control every aspect of that as much as possible. So yes, our mushrooms are grown in China and sourced directly from the manufacturer and we are pleased with the quality. So again, it comes down to the company you're buying from and the sourcing standards that they have because you can obviously slap a label or a bag on any product and call it anything. And there is a very limited amount of checks and balances that actually go on in the food and the supplement industries, which I'm sure you've heard about. So it comes down at the end of the day to you trust the company you're buying from. And that's the importance of branding and trust and even awareness and education around these ideas. And that's the importance of trusting the brands that you're buying from. One final note on adaptogenic mushrooms is something that you might want to look for, though it's not all inclusive because there are some exceptions to this. But in general, you're going to want to look for fruiting bodies. So there's two parts of the mushroom. There's the mycelium and then there's the fruiting body. And I won't go into all the specifics of that today, but basically it's the fruiting body that is most revered for its health benefits. Although there is some benefit shown in actually processing the mycelium, but the research is limited. Most of the research that's being done is actually on the fruiting body of mushrooms, though I do suspect there'll be more research done with the mycelium. I think there's benefit to both because after all, mushrooms are just a miracle compound and pretty much consuming as much of the mushroom as possible is always going to be good. There are some issues with sourcing mushrooms in that grain is actually used in the process, whether the grain is extracted itself, which the mushrooms grow on, or it's somehow combined with the extract and all blended together. There's a lot of ways to cut corners and add filler and things like that, that again, it comes down to the sourcing, whether you trust the source. So generally looking for 100% fruiting bodies or maybe even 100% mycelium from an organic substrate. There are some companies that are doing that that are okay. We source 100% fruiting bodies here. Waffles just for simplicity because we know it works. We know it's effective and it makes it simple for the consumer. And so this is just an intro into adaptogenic mushrooms. If you have any questions or comments, you can drop them below and we'll answer those. You can also send me an email personally, Colin at wildfoods.co. And I hope you subscribe to get more videos like this to help you on your health journey.